Hell's Kitchen isn't just about the drama, or Chef Ramsay shouting his way through service. It's a launch pad for some seriously talented chefs to get some momentum going in their careers. Just like this contestant, who earned himself the badass moniker, the One-Armed Bandit. Dave Levy rocks Season 6 with his skills and charm, scoring himself a sweet $250,000 and a gig at a Roxy restaurant and bar in Whistler, British Columbia. But it wasn't all smooth sailing for Dave to get to that point. In the very first episode, Chef Ramsay, for the first time, declared that the signature dish challenge was now a team thing. Yeah, so any and all studying of previous seasons that this guy did was pretty much pointless now. Either way, Dave was the first contestant up from the blue team facing off against Suzanne, and this is what he presented. Ostrich with pan-seared Brussels sprouts. Dave was really looking forward to Chef Ramsay's feedback. I've definitely idolized Chef Ramsay for years. But he also said that any negative criticism from his mentor would leave him mentally damaged. So the guy was certainly playing with fire. Thankfully for him, the tasting started off on a good note. Chef Ramsay thought that the ostrich dish was delicious, especially the seasoning, but he wasn't too thrilled about the Brussels sprouts. Why are these f***ing Brussels sprouts undercooked? Well, a mixed bag is better than an outright failure, I guess. Yeah, shit, Brussels sprouts. Ah! However, seeing Ramsay spitting out his dish like that did more damage to his self-esteem than he expected. Luckily for Dave, Suzanne's risotto wasn't all that great either. The two of them ended up scoring no points for their team, and Dave headed back to the line feeling disappointed in himself. It's like heartbreaking that he didn't like that. You know what they say, first impressions last a lifetime. But this really isn't how Dave wanted to be remembered. Thankfully, the rest of the blue team managed to secure a win. And, well, Dave found himself at the receiving end of a reward that he didn't play a huge part in earning. Enjoy it. It's a okay. treat to be sitting here with your chef and not being screamed at. <laughs> The famous chef then took the opportunity to explain that the only reason he's so tough on chefs is because he wants them to improve. However, the infamous Joseph had to cut in with a rather rude remark. All this, you know, that's not what I'm here for. I'm not gonna lose my eye on the prize. And Dave didn't waste a second to defend Chef Ramsay. He's being a little too intense in the way he disrespects Chef Ramsay. Dave was pro Ramsay right from the start, and he was determined to win the man's confidence. But unfortunately, they decided to add more trouble in his way. In episode 3, after losing the firefighter past the meal challenge, the blue team was punished with cleaning the fire trucks, followed by scrubbing the dining room clean. While the red team took off in the choppers to claim their reward, they found himself stuck between the trucks, like literally. I felt my wrist start to swell up right away. Dave decided to keep his mouth shut and soldier on because he didn't want to alarm anyone, but the damage was already done. As the blue team proceeded with the second half of the punishment, Dave found himself scrambling for ice to ease the swelling around his wrists. My wrist is really screwed up. It was really swollen that I can't feel the tips of my fingers. After a quick check from the medic, Dave was immediately rushed to the hospital. This wasn't something a nice pack could set right. It was far, far worse. When Dave returned, he came back with some bad news. I have a torn FCR and a slight fracture of the wrist. Amidst the growing concerns of his teammates, Dave made it clear that he was tough enough to bear the pain. I'm a tough guy, I can take the pain. Dude, I'm fine to work. The following day, when Chef Ramsay checked in on him, Dave brushed it off like it was no big deal. And then, when the famous chef dropped the bomb about needing waiters for the service, Dave decided to volunteer. Although Ramsay wasn't too sure how he'd manage, he did loud him for his courage by dropping the nickname that Dave would soon become known by, one arm bandit. That's you know, not words. a problem. I can use both hands, yeah. Uh -huh. But with time, the pain only got worse. And the blue team truly started to worry that Dave's injury would only weigh them down. We got Dave and his wrist, and we have Kevin and his ankles. However, he wasn't about to give up. Fairly unbearable pain. Even if I'm doing harm to my wrist, I just push through it. Despite the excruciating pain radiating throughout his hand, he went ahead with all the chores by himself. I mean, just look at the man working his hands on the dough. Unbelievable. Shape it, knead it. I'm waiting to hear from the doctor what the deal is. Dave wasn't just determined, he was dead set on proving his worth to the famous chef. However, the injury was a thorn in his side time and time again, and it wasn't finished with him yet. For a period of two weeks, you will not be able to move your thumb. Two weeks felt like a lifetime for Dave. He wasn't ready to leave the competition so early, but was heartbroken enough that he needed some time alone. <sighs> Had it been for any other contestant, they'd have left at the first sign of trouble. 
But Dave, despite feeling crushed, headed straight to Chef Ramsay's office to break the news to him. Unsure of what to expect next, Dave was so nervous about how Chef Ramsay would react. But you won't believe what happened. Chef Ramsay didn't want to lose a talented chef like Dave over an injury. Considering it was Dave's weaker hand which was affected, Chef Ramsay decided to give him the opportunity to stick around. Are you going to stay in Hell's Kitchen? There are so many thoughts going through my head right now, I don't, I don't know what to think. And he took it. Chef Ramsay was more than happy to give him the thumbs up. Uh, too soon. The go ahead on that call. And it was for sure the right decision. Because the next thing you know, Dave was back during the dinner service, rocking a cast, and Chef Ramsay had him working the dessert station. Dave, I want you on desserts, please. With that cast, fresh, I want it over there, yes? Let's go. And boy, oh boy, did he hustle. The one-armed bandit whipped up desserts like a champ, catching Chef Ramsay's eye in the process. He's got one f***ing hand in action, yeah, and he's working quicker than anyone. Coming from Ramsay, that's a compliment that can't go unnoticed. Dave's determination was off the charts, and what do you know? The blue team ended up sweeping the win, and I think you know who they had to thank for it. Holy crap! Dave had just proven to Chef Ramsay and the rest of his team that he could win services with an arm literally tied behind his back. However, towards the end of the day, Dave's pain came back to bite him. Back at the dorms, he struggled with simple tasks like trying to open a chicken pot pie wrapper. And when Amanda offered to lend him a hand, he refused help. Oh, I have to be able to like do things myself. <laughs> of course, he ended up dropping the package. But he continued to shine throughout the services that followed. For instance, during the welcome home dinner service, Dave held down the garnish station like a pro. What's more, when the red team couldn't handle the heat, he dashed out to help serve up another round of entrees to the dining room. We went over, put a bow on it, and that's it. And his confident stride continued to reign supreme. During the 700 calories three-course meal challenge, Dave teamed up with Andy to tackle the dessert. But when Dave suggested adding some sugar to their filling, that little suggestion got shot down in record time. I have to add sugar to it. I don't think so. I think it's perfect. And when it came time to present their dish, a fancy egg white crepe with fruit compote and blackberry yogurt cream, things took a pretty bad turn. And... <laughs> oh, come on. Ramsey couldn't help but chuckle at its simplicity. I mean, what even was this? It tastes foul. That's the kind of crap you serve when you've just come out of a heart bypass or an ulcer operation. That's a joke. So maybe Andy and Dave didn't end up being the best pair after all. And maybe he really did do good by himself, listening to his gut and flying solo. However, during the dinner service, Dave was assigned to the garnish station. But sous chef Scott caught him cooking up the wrong garnishes. Dave owned up to his mistake, admitting that he was just spacing out. Sometime later, he had a bit of an issue with Kevin over garnish timing. You don't even know what you're doing because you're cooking something we don't even need. And he was far from through. I got three minutes, everybody else? I have three minutes, so you have four. When Kevin yells at me, I could give a f Mashed potatoes ready? Three minutes. That's not right, one that's, minute left. That was about, yeah, one no, minute, one minute. minute. For a while, it looked like Dave was just having trouble getting along with people. And in a team competition of all things? Well, then losing the challenge was inevitable. But like I mentioned earlier, Dave was a one-man team. And this attribute of his took center stage during a future dinner service when the chef's table showed up. To see Dave's welcoming and hospitable approach was quite surprising. I want to make sure you guys get taken care of. We're going to work it out for you. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Luckily, his risottos were spot on, and the chef's table were in love with everything they tasted. Here's two samples of the risotto for you to try right now. Not bad, huh? It felt great to get compliments from such highly esteemed chefs. Very nice risotto. Thank you, chef. Despite the blue team ultimately losing the service, Dave earned some props as the best of the worst for kicking things off strong with those appetizers. You were in front of the red kitchen with appetizers. Clearly the best of the worst. The dude clearly had the chops, but the complaints still kept coming. I need four portions of mash, yeah? Oh, Give me a bit. Right here, right here. Look at the speed of Dave and just watch Andy. And coming. One of the best performances came from Dave. You proved to me tonight that you're no fluke. Don't stop. No, sure. Sure. But hey, of course it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. A real success story has a couple of rough patches at least, and Dave's was no exception. Like during the crepe challenge, when he faced off against Sabrina in the dessert round. He whipped up a cream cheese and mixed berry crepe, but man, it was hardly the prettiest dish that night. Why is it full of gunk around the outside? It looks like a plate of diarrhea. Chef Ramsay and Jean-Philippe were straight up shocked at how bad it looked. So shocked that Dave lost the round and eventually the entire challenge itself. 
which left them stuck prepping both kitchens for the next service and chowing down on some choice cuts. Think boiled cow tongue, stale baguette, and head cheese. I don't know what to say, guys. I'm sorry. We had a horrible loss this morning, especially me. I'll be working very hard, nonstop. I have to prove myself or I know I'm history. But hey, throughout the punishment, Dave stood out. He owned up to his mistake and apologized to his team like a true gentleman. But the smell of that cow tongue almost had him losing his lunch. I tried to sample the cow tongue. <laughs> Just the smell of it alone almost made me barf all over the plate. And who could blame him? Dave wasn't just a talented chef with a lovable personality, he was also a team player down the line. During prep, he showed genuine concern for Andy's well-being after an incident. Andy, like the tips of his fingers were literally taken off. And during the dinner service, he went above and beyond to support his teammates once again. I don't know how Andy's gonna be able to work. I'll work risottos. I'll do all your risotto. Dave stepped up, handling both their stations without missing a beat. Juggling two servings of risotto plus tagliatelle, lamb, and steak all by himself with a broken arm was no easy feat. And of course, Chef Ramsay loved the food. Risotto is f***ing delicious. Very nice. Service, please. Yup, every dish he served was spot on. Don't take this the wrong way. We are 10,000 times better cooked with one hand. At this point, it really got me thinking, why not just give him the award instead of waiting another half a season to get to it? I mean, this dude truly deserved it. But whenever he got on a roll, his hand came back to haunt him. In episode 10, Dave was holding it down on the appetizer station when disaster struck. He lifted a heavy pan and ended up aggravating his already injured wrist. I just felt a nerve in my wrist shot up to my elbow and that shot up to my ear. My whole body like twists like this. And all of Dave's fears were back in full force. I gotta see the medic. Oh. Oh. Despite the shooting pain radiating from his wrist, Dave refused to throw in the towel. You can move him a little bit though. Horrific pain signals down here. Yeah, the guy was nothing if not resilient. Dave powered through the pain and got right back to work, earning some serious props from Kevin, especially when his bisque was actually accepted. I can muscle through the pain, and I'm not giving up. Dave, I need a bisque. Yeah, I got a bisque working, chef. Dave, you're the fucking man. You are awesome. Now that is what I call dedication. While most folks are usually busy competing and looking out for themselves, this man really got his team behind him. When they got their black jackets, he wasn't too thrilled to be paired up with Suzanne for the Taste It Now Make It Challenge. <laughs> Suzanne is definitely not my choice, but whatever. I'll just roll with it. I mean, he'd seen her game from the very beginning, so it's only fair that he went into it with an opinion already formed. Let's see how things went, huh? So we've got sautéed turbo yep. on a bed of blanched spinach, parsnip, parsnip puree, puree. Mm -hmm. bits of calamari, tarragon, chervil, and passion, passion fruit. fruit sauce. Okay, good. I feel really good about it. It was a beautiful partnership. But hey, they ended up winning the challenge, nailing every component of Chef Ramsay's dish, except for the puree. Puree was a white onion. Oh. It was sweet. Everybody missed the puree, like we're all on an equal level. Still, a win's a win, and they scored a lunch at Chef Ramsay's London West Hollywood, tagging along with season four winner, Christina. And Dave played no small part in their joint victory. Now mm -hmm. that we are in the black jacket, right. now it's time to like turn that off. Well, don't turn it off. I wanna hear it that you wanna work. But lunch didn't exactly go so smoothly. Dave found it really hard to get a word in edgewise with Christina. Thanks for having me. Lovely to meet you both. All in all, it was great. Except for Suzanne. Yeah, not exactly a ladies' man, I guess. Anyway, sometime later in the season, the tension between Dave and Tennille boiled over. He wasn't too pleased with her after she flip-flopped on a deliberation decision and ultimately sent Van packing because of it. Suzanne, how are you? I think that's decided. Tennille decided to flip a switch down there. And it's safe to say that things escalated very quickly from there. Why didn't we just agree to Van beforehand? We didn't all agree. I don't trust Tennille for shit. She's got no place in Hell's Kitchen anymore. I hope she's out of here real soon. Man, seeing this side of the guy for the first time was a huge surprise. Who knew he could blow up like that? But the drama didn't stop there. Dave ended up storming out of the room, leaving the situation unresolved. Fuck you. Eventually, Dave ended up on the losing side of a challenge, and as a punishment, he had to clean up a stretch of road outside and the front entrance of Hell's Kitchen too. 
To make matters worse, he was stuck with Tenniel of all people. I have to be near Tenniel today, it makes me nauseous. If I hear Tenniel bitching, I'll lose my mind. Her constant complaints didn't help his mood either. And while they were sweeping up the front, Dave's fractured wrist started to act up again. Perfect timing, right? It wants to crack the plaster in half, it's so swollen. I don't know what to do. Although he tried to ice it, the agony just wouldn't let up. Back at the dorms, he was in real bad shape. Ugh, something just pulled. Kevin urged him to prioritize his help, but I don't know. There was something off about the way that he said it. Four people standing in my way. Four people. I want him to leave this competition. Dave, he truly poses a threat to me winning. Dave had his suspicions too, thinking that Kevin wouldn't mind seeing him out of the competition. Despite the pain and pressure, he made the tough call to stick it out to cook another day. But only more trouble was on the horizon for Dave. He got stuck handling both the appetizer and dessert stations, and when he tried to check in with Tennille about any menu additions that might have cropped up, things took a nasty turn. Is there anything new on cold app? Salads or anything? What a fucking idiot. <laughs> she really didn't go there, did she? I personally can't stand Tennille. I will never bring conflict onto the kitchen floor. Never. Meanwhile, Dave's poor hand kept getting worse. During the dinner service, Dave was holding down the meat station. He got his lamb sliced up, but when he went to lift the pan with his bad wrist, a massive jolt of pain shot through him. And it was so intense that he nearly collapsed right then and there. Uh. Uh. Yeah. <sighs> the light started going away, I got dark. Chef Ramsay noticed that something was off and followed him to the back store. Once there, he found Dave sweating bullets, looking dizzy and out of breath. Concerned, the famous chef sent him straight to the medic for a quick checkup. You're sweating, you're looking dizzy, and you're looking like you're out of breath. Come here, sir, can you just give him a once over? Thank you. A few minutes later, Dave was back in the kitchen. Despite the pain, he managed to get his lamb approved by Chef Ramsay. Talk about grit and determination. Later, when the chefs were lined up, Chef Ramsay didn't hold back his concern for Dave. He mentioned that he'd never seen a chef endure pain like that before, and he was worried that Dave might not be able to keep going in the competition. But Dave still wasn't ready to throw in the towel just yet. Oh, no, no, no. He assured Chef Ramsay of his intent to continue, pointing out that his right hand was still good to go. In a desperate attempt, begging Chef Ramsay not to boot him because of an injury, Dave made his case. One arm bandit is still here, and I'll see everybody at the Araxi when this is all said and done. But hey, Hell's Kitchen threw in a curveball that ended up putting a smile on his face. Your fiance McKay and your sister Allison. <laughs> and this further cemented Dave's resolution to win the whole damn thing. You don't realize how much you miss somebody until you get to see them again. No words can describe how I felt. And win it, he did. After being faced with threats to leave the competition as early as episode 3, Dave emerged as the undisputable winner of the season, literally winning Hell's Kitchen with one hand tied behind his back. I can't believe I won. It's a dream come true. And Chef Ramsay couldn't be happier. Dave has a very natural ability and a very sophisticated palate. He fought through excruciating pain and excelled and went on to win Hell's Kitchen. He's going to be an amazing asset to the Axie restaurant and bar in Whistler. Winning Hell's Kitchen was a dream come true for him, but it wasn't a magical cure-all for his problems. After clinching the Season 6 victory with his culinary finesse and one-handed prowess, Dave was all set to jet off to Whistler, British Columbia. This was all to claim his head chef throne at a Raxi restaurant and bar, accompanied by a cool $250,000 prize. But hold on, here comes a twist. Upon arrival, Dave found out that the gig wasn't exactly what he'd bargained for. Instead of the coveted head chef spot, he was offered a line cook position. Like, talk about false advertising, huh? So, after being faced with the mother of all insults, he packed his things and bid Adzir to Whistler, heading straight back to his hometown in Chester, New Jersey. But fear not, Dave didn't hang up his hat for good. Nope, he dusted himself off and dove right back into the kitchen game, landing a sweet gig as a baker at Mara's Cafe and Bakery in Denville, New Jersey. Now, if you're itching to stay up to date with the latest and greatest from our one armed champion on social media, you might be in for a bit of a challenge. But hey, who needs Instagram fame when you're whipping up delicious treats, huh? I'm glad he's living his best life, even if that means I can't snoop around in his private business. Ah, well. Anyway, what are your thoughts on Dave's journey? Don't forget to let me know in the comments section down below. 
And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to visit my social media pages, drop a like, subscribe, and turn on my post notifications if you haven't already. And if you thought this video was crazy, wait till you see my next video right here since it's even better.